Hey everyone, welcome to our small footprint. My name is Nissa, and if you're new here, we are a family of eight who live off grid in Australia. My most recent video, my most recent chat video, I was talking about how I had a whole bunch of videos to do voiceovers for, and I was going to try and do them that day that I did the chat video. But then I ended up doing a chat video that hadn't been planned. <laughs> and then it was four o'clock in the afternoon. It was time to start dinner and time to get the generator back on. And so it didn't happen. So we're at the next day and it's about 3 p.m. in the afternoon and I'm going to do the voiceovers for a bunch of videos for you. Uh, so I'm just gonna sit here in the garden because it's in the shade at this time of day and probably be joined by roosters because that's what happens and uh, get these voiceovers done for three or four videos that I've got all the notes for so that I can get them out over the next few days and share the stuff that I've gone to the effort of filming but haven't managed to get to a point of being able to share with you guys. So that is the plan. So the next few intros are going to be me sitting in this exact same spot and I'm going to be doing the voiceover for them and I'm probably going to be pretty hoarse by the end of it because we all know how I ramble. Uh, so this is that's the aim though. Uh, the kids are doing the dishes inside at the moment so I've vacated the kitchen because they've got music going while they do the dishes and stuff. And I'm gonna get this done and then it will be dinner time. Well, time for me to make dinner. And then I will start working on getting these out for you as well. And now I'm still filming everything I do all day and every day and these things will come, all the meal planning and food prep and everything will come out in order as well, post these ones. But this is just what we've done so far. So today's video, let me have a look at my list here. I wanna get these out in order because uh, if I don't put them out in order, then I'm gonna be using things that I've got videos for in the next videos without having shown you how I did them. So the first video I've got here is making seasoned salts. So I really like salt. Uh, I know some people don't, but I really like the flavor of salt on anything and everything. I'm a fairly heavy salt eater. Uh, a lot of my medication causes me to have a fairly low sodium uh, count, whatever you want to call it. So I do need to consume salt as well because of that. Uh, and sometimes I crave it more than others, but I do enjoy salt, but I try not to salt too heavily the food that we make, the food that I cook, that everyone's going to eat because not everyone has the same tastes and the kids don't need as much sodium as I do. So I like to make seasoned salts that we can use as finishing salts on things. We can sprinkle them over the top of stuff afterwards. Uh, and so that's what I've done. So I've made three different seasoned salts because I could basically. Uh, and I wanted to show you how I made them uh, and what sort of the ingredients that I used for them to show you to, get, to inspire you because you can you can adapt these however you want depending on the flavor profile that you're looking for and that you enjoy. So I did a bacon salt, a smoked rosemary citrus garlic salt and a mushroom salt from various different uh, inspirations of my own so I'll share that as I go along. So uh, here we go have a look at uh, what I did and hopefully it, yeah as I said it inspires you to make some other flavors that you might enjoy. So with the bacon seasoning I really like the Delicio brand bacon seasoning it's a vegan bacon seasoning uh, which the reason I looked at it initially is because it has no dairy in it. It wasn't because it was strictly vegan, just because it had no dairy in it, uh, which meant that I could use it at home and not worry about it. Uh, I like it. I discovered that I like it in a lot of things. I like it sprinkled on popcorn. So if I put a bit of ghee on my popcorn and then sprinkle the bacon seasoning, it's really nice. I really enjoy it sprinkled over my pizzas. Um, I like enjoy it added to my mayos to give sort of a smoky bacon mayo. It's really nice when you're dipping prawns into a, like a smoky bacon mayo. That's really good. Uh, I like it sprinkled on roast veggies, uh, just about anything. And I did a whole lot of research about finding some sort of a bacon salt but the problem was that most of them used bacon like you cooked bacon to the point where it would crumble up and you used that crumbled bacon as part of your seasoning and I didn't want that I wanted a bacon flavored salt not a bacon salt as such so I had a lot of difficulties finding things I did find a few different bits and pieces of recipes I'll try and link to the one that I took the most inspiration from if I can find it again uh, on in the description but I did just write notes down on it and then have played with it for the last six months to figure out what ratios I like, but it has very similar ingredients, just the ratios that I like. 
so uh, the recipe that I found online had a little bit of sumac in it and I thought that, that might be quite nice sumac has almost a, a citrusy a bright flavor which I thought would be a really nice contrast in there with the bacon seasoning I have made it with and without it and I do like that little bit of brightness that the sumac gives it but it isn't particularly necessary I'll put all the uh, ratios in the description rather than reeling them off here because it's never going to be able to remember them if I reel them off here and I don't have the notes in front of me so I will grab my recipe book and I will put the ratios in the description so the basic so the basic garlic flavored salt you're looking at sorry the basic bacon flavored salt you're basically looking at a garlic a smoked paprika and sugar sprinkle very similar to what I use for my pork rub you were looking for that smoky slightly sweet flavor that bacon has because most bacon is cured with a bit of sugar uh, and that garlicky flavor as well so again it's very versatile in or very uh, changeable depending on how you like the flavor of your bacon I did look at buying some uh, maple powder you can buy some maple powder and I thought that would be really nice in it and that might be something that I'll grab at some point to give a go you can buy smoke powder I do have some I did try that that's a little bit overpowering the smoked paprika works quite well to give you the smoky flavor without that uh, the smoke powder could give you a little bit of an aftertaste that was vaguely unpleasant especially if it just didn't clump like if it didn't blend very well so I tried that I didn't want to use any liquids because I wanted it to be nice and dry because it's a seasoning mix uh, so smoked paprika I found was the best thing for me and we all anyone who's been watching knows how much I like smoked paprika so that seemed to be the best for me. So I also used some peppercorns to give it a little bit of heat so I, and a bit of that sumac. So a little bit of that bright flavor to counteract some of the other flavors. I put it all in the Thermomix because when you're using a salt like this, you want it all to be the same size grains if you've got different size grains in there so like I use raw sugar which has quite a large grain size and I'm using ground fresh ground black pepper which has a variety of different size grains in it so when you're wanting to do something like a finishing salt you want it either to be specifically lots of different size grains or you want it all to be the same so with this bacon seasoning we wanted it all to be the same so if I stuck it I stuck it all in my thermomix and ground it up so that the sugar the uh, bits of pepper everything is all the same size grain and that way when it goes into the jar it's not going to settle or anything you can give it a shake every now and again but it should all stay pretty evenly mixed in there and you can just dust it over whatever you want also when it comes to popcorn the uh, the best seasonings for a popcorn are ones that are really fine so if you're putting salt on your popcorn you're better off grinding that salt to be almost a powder before you sprinkle it onto the popcorn it's going to hold the popcorn better if you're using too large a salt grains they're just going to fall off the popcorn so again with this style of seasoning with the bacon seasoning you want it all to be nice and fine and really small so using a coffee grinder or a food processor the thermix works really well uh, something like that is the best bet for these it's going to mean that as I said that it's not going to settle differently too I did do it the first time ran it through pulled it out and decided that it was still a little bit too gritty in between my fingers so I stuck it back in and went a little bit longer uh, I wanted it really nice and fine and dusty that's what I was aiming for and that's how the Delicio brand stuff comes as well so I was sort of looking to mimic that as well uh, ended up with a about a quarts jar's worth with the ratios that I'll put in the description the quantities that I'll put there the next one I did is based on the Nom Nom Paleo's mushroom powder so they have a, a Nom Nom Paleo has a book a few cookbooks they're quite good uh, but she also has the mushroom magic mushroom or whatever it's called on the website as well so I'll put a link to that in the description so Daryl adores this salt uh, I don't mind it in a lot of things I'm not keen on it as a finishing salt but he really likes it as a finishing salt he likes to sprinkle it on absolutely everything uh, and he likes it on his pizzas and things like that too I don't mind I really like it put on things like uh, when I'm cooking chicken sprinkling it over the chicken and then frying it up that it really adds that really nice umami flavor to it or adding it to uh, things that I'm cooking where it's going to dissolve in there because it's got powdered mushrooms mushrooms in it so I get these these mixed dried mushrooms from Costco Karvik is forever stealing them because he eats them just <laughs> dried which is fine it's a good snack and they're at Costco they're not overly expensive dried mushrooms can be really expensive uh, so I also rehydrate these sometimes for cooking for things like my steak pie I use the bits of mushroom uh, and other bits and pieces I will rehydrate them and chop them up and use them in my cooking so we use them for a variety of things I use the thermix to grind the mushrooms to a really fine powder so that's the first point is we want the mushrooms into a really fine powder uh, I added a bunch of thyme normally I'd use this the stuff that I have from the garden I would strip it off 
branches that I have from the garden but I don't have any time at the moment it died off over summer and hasn't come back as yet or may not come back so I'm going to plant some more this year because I use it in a lot of things I normally dry quite a lot of it to use but uh, for some reason I don't have any so I just have some bulk uh, thyme leaves that I've purchased from the bulk spice place uh, I ground up some chilies as well so I have some chilies these were unknown chilies from the garden just small red ones I'm not entirely sure what they were uh, but I dried them all I just strung them up on string and dried them all and have put them in a jar so all I did was I ground them up using the tribes the personal blender that I have there uh, I wanted to whiz them up really fine in the tribes before adding them to the thermomix because I didn't want large chunks of chili in the stuff in the thermix but I wasn't going to whiz the stuff in the thermix really really fine because we want some texture to this because this is a finishing salt so I use the try best personal blender it's like a little ninja type thing to grind up the chili so these are so you can use just uh, chili flakes or chili flakes if you purchase them I just happen to have these chilies here so that's what I use when I'm using when something asks for dried chili flakes and things like that so I ground them up nice and small to add to the thermix as well I then use some of the flaked salt for texture as well as some of the fine Celtic salt. So uh, the flaked salt is this is you know this is partly why I wanted to blend those chilies separately because I want the texture of the flaked salt in there. So we're not going to grind the flaked salt up because we want that texture. The mushrooms are a really fine powder, but the thyme leaves have texture to them as well. So you've got the the fine mushroom powder, the fine Celtic salt, and then you've got the flaked salt as well as the uh, the thyme pieces in there as well so you've got these varying textures in this it's a really light and fluffy kind of a salt mix this one and it does work wonderful for sprinkling over anything it's over pastas over pizza over vegetables it doesn't matter it has that you get those flaked salt pieces but you get the umami flavor from the dried mushrooms as well and then you get those hints of thyme through it too and a little bit of spice uh, so I used the flaked salt as well as the the fine Celtic salt because that's what I have at the moment uh, and so I put the flake salt and the fine salt in with the powdered mushrooms the thyme leaves and the powdered chilies and I just stuck it on reverse to make it all blend up together so that it was all nicely mixed up and poured it into the jar uh, again this gave me just under a quart size of a jar it's a pretty good size because this one will you will need to give a bit of a shake up every now and again because you've got those varying size grains within the same salt uh, if you want to keep it all evenly you want to give it a good shake so it's good that it's not too full in that jar so that was a good amount for this size jar uh, and it worked well Daryl has been using it extensively so you will see it in the videos as well the last one that I did was a rosemary citrus garlic salt so I'd picked some branches off my rosemary plant last week or the week before and I'd hung them up inside a cloth piece of cloth hung them upside down in a piece of cloth so they didn't get dusty or spiders or webs or anything on them to let them dry naturally uh, so these are all perfectly dry now so I'm stripping gonna strip all the rosemary uh, pieces off the branches now uh, and I'm going to put it into the thermix now I measured it by sort of cup measures because we're going to do sort of a, a two to one uh, of herbs to salt so you can do sort of two times the amount of herbs to the salt uh, and then I added a quarter of a cup of lemon zest this was out of my freezer so it's gonna have some moisture in it but it's okay because we're gonna smoke this salt so I added the lemon zest in as well uh, and then blitzed it up until it was really fine I, I tasted it and I decided that it, I wanted some more of that lemon flavor so I added another quarter cup of lemon zest in there too uh, I'm pulling random seeds out as I go along obviously I wasn't real careful when I was packing these jars with the lemon zest uh, I added some garlic powder too now because I'm using wet lemon zest I probably could have put fresh garlic in here I didn't really think about it at the time so I just used garlic powder but because we're going to smoke this and dry this further it, it would have been okay to use the uh, garlic it also would have been okay to use uh, the moist rosemary as well because we're going to smoke it but I had dried it for this purpose so that's fine so the wetter your salt is the longer it's going to take you to dry it out afterwards but that's fine that's personal preference there of whether you're using fresh herbs or you're using dried herbs uh, you can use store-bought herbs as well of course uh, so I put the extra lemon zest in there ground it all up till it was a beautiful breed 
green green color and really nice and fine uh, I spread it out into a baking tray with some baking paper and then decided to to dry it out in the smoker so you want to dry it on a fairly low heat so we're looking at say I don't know 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius is what we're going for uh, 40 degrees you can put it in a dehydrator if you were running a dehydrator I tend to not use my dehydrator uh, in winter because it just chews too much power uh, but and I haven't set up any sort of solar dehydrator and it's been wet and overcast and crappy weather lately so I used, decided to use a smoker so I could have put it in the barbecue but it's really hard to regulate the heat really low in the barbecue it tends to want to go higher rather than lower uh, it also uses more gas because there's more burners in it so this, the smoker uses a really low amount of gas which is great so I can run the gas and put a piece of wood in there and just turn the gas really down really low and depending on what wood I'm using sometimes I can turn the gas off completely and just run the wood in there for heat especially if you're doing a, a low and slow smoke so I ran it about the, the 38 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Fahrenheit for a few hours, uh, spread it out on the tray and then and let it go. Now I pulled it out a few times and moved it around with a whisk to make sure that all the, all the different uh, sections of salt were drying out uh, and added as it added a bit of the red gum that we have on the property which is the, the wood that I tend to use for smoking. It's the one that we like the flavor of when we're smoking the most. Now uh, you want this to be really dry uh, you don't want any moisture in this when you put it in a jar because if there's moisture in it then it's going to it's going to clump up and potentially go moldy and things like that you also want it to be cold once you put it in the jar so once you've finished it once it's finished smoking and drying out you want to leave it on the tray to completely cool down because if you've got heat in it and you put it in a jar seal the jar you're going to have humidity in the jar as well you're going to have condensation so you want to make sure it's nice and cool and dry before you put it in the jar as well so this one made less end result salt than the others, uh, but that was based on the herbs that I had. So because we're doing a ratio of two parts herbs to one part salt, it was however many herbs I had. I have plenty of rosemary in the garden, so I could easily pull the same like by three times out to, to make even more. Uh, but it was just doing the three different flavors so that we had those choices while I'm eating and cooking over the next couple of weeks uh, to be able to use and to share with you. Now smoked salt is definitely something you like or you don't. I adore smoked salt and Daryl really enjoys it as well and the smoked salt flakes are even better so sometimes we smoke we just smoke a tray of the salt flakes uh, because that flavor of the smoked salt flakes over the top of everything and the texture of the salt flakes in your mouth are awesome. Flake salt is not the cheapest thing in the world, uh, but Costco does sell a 1.4 kilo bucket, I think it is, for about $32, which isn't bad in pricing compared to elsewhere. I have looked at buying flaked or kosher salt from some of the curing places because they sell them in big bags. It's still pretty expensive, and most of the time it's unnecessary. Uh, you just have to alter the ratio of the salt that you're using if you're not using a flaked salt when you're following a curing recipe But the texture of it eating it is really nice one time. We got this uh, Salt from I think it was Aldi. It was one in their special buys, you know the the the, uh, the aisles in the middle and they had a pyramid smoked salt and I have never seen it again but the texture of that was amazing and it's something to do with the way it's smoked or heated that it changes into that pyramid shape uh, and I look for that all the time because it was really really nice the the way it had the smoked salt flavor that we enjoy but the way the texture of it when it was on things as well was awesome so I keep an eye out for that at Aldi all the time but I haven't seen it since that time it's one of those things too that when you only ever see it once and you buy it and you really like it and you sit there and go why didn't I buy more of that <laughs> so I'll have to keep an eye out for that next time anyway but so that was three different flavored salts that we really enjoy using here the the herb salt is something that we vary depending on the season what's available uh, and it's not one that we always have though it is very nice uh, I tend to reach for the bacon salt because I really enjoy it and the kids really like it on popcorn and stuff too and Daryl's favorite is definitely the mushroom salt so I hope that has yet yeah, inspired you to give some flavored salt to go if you're a salt eater you can always use these flavors without the salt I like there's no reason why you couldn't uh, they're just a, a seasoning mix then uh, we just happen to like them with salt so you know there you go so I hope you enjoyed and I will see you on the next video thanks guys